Hey, Melissa here. I'm at Dragon Man's. It was a very busy weekend. We had over 140 people come out for our military museum tour. Grand opening weekend. Couldn't have asked for a more successful outcome. Did not expect that many people. Uh, my dad is uh, the collector and we have one of the largest privately owned military museums in the country. He's been collecting for over 40 years and he does the tour along with a couple of other tour guides. So you definitely get a chance to meet him and he does some of the tours. Um, we cover every major war the U.S. was in from the Civil War, Revolutionary War, all the way up to Iraq and Afghanistan, all the major wars in between Vietnam, uh, Korea, World War One, World War Two, and then also covers his 50s room where he has over 50 hot rods and um, a huge Elvis memorabilia room. So if you want to see the museum, come on out Wednesday, Friday, or Sunday at 10 a.m. for a two hour and 20 minute guided tour. You can only see the museum on a guided tour. My dad does a lot of the military museum stuff, motorcycle machining, and then uh, I basically run the firearm store. So naturally I'm gonna stay up to date on all of these current bills going on in Colorado. We also have paintball parks, dirt bike tracks, and shooting ranges open to the public, $12 shoot all day. You can't get cheaper than that. So I wanna keep you guys updated. I've allowed like another week to go by <clears throat> before I gave you an update because a lot of stuff happens very quickly sometimes uh, during the legislative session, which will and May 8th, so hopefully it ends before some of these bills get passed, uh, but you never know what's gonna happen. So I'm gonna give you guys all an overview on the proposed assault weapons ban bill. Yes, I hate that it's called that too. I'm gonna tell you how you can help and I'm gonna go into a lot of details over the, what happened in the last couple of days and give you an update on all the other bills that are going on and where they're at. So on Friday, the uh, HB 24-1292, did pass the House second reading, and then yesterday they voted on it. It was a 27 to 35 um, almost party line vote. All Republicans voted no on it, and then nine Republicans actually voted no on it as well. So that was kind of interesting. However, it did pass because we were overran and saturated you know, by Democrats versus Republicans in the House and honestly in the Senate. Uh, but it, this does not mean that it passed. It just means that now it's gonna go into the Senate for three uh, readings as well, and then it still has to be signed by the governor. So. Um, people are thinking that it will be a little bit more of a challenge in the Senate and we'll definitely see how that goes. The main thing is that once it does go to the Senate, there will be a Senate committee hearing where we now, the general public, again, can sign up to testify in opposition of this bill and let them all know why uh, this probably won't get the intended outcome that the original bill sponsors wanted. On Friday, there was some amendments. So they wanted to create a public task force to figure out what were the causes of mass shootings, which, you know, hey, that's not a horrible idea. The amendments will actually cause a little bit of a delay, but um, then it will still go on to the Senate where we can sign up and hopefully it just gets killed in the Senate committee hearing. I'll go into that in a little bit. It reduced the fine from $250,000 to $750. So that was good and then um, allow transfer of your farms to your heirs. Thanks, but I guess you just can't transfer any farm until you die. Uh, so anything that you bought as an investment, you know, that's not great. This bill is not great for that whatsoever. And I know myself, I've bought a lot of farms as investments and now, um, you know, this bill would kill my opportunity to make any of that, mo that money back. Um, if passed, it will go into effect for individual to individual transfers through an FFL. So if you want to sell it, sell your current farms, you have to do it by July 1st. And then for gun stores um, to get rid of their current inventory, to sell it to customers or transfer it out of state by August 1st of this year. The Democrats who voted in opposition of this bill yesterday, um, I really appreciate them for voting no uh, because actually a lot of them were women, which I was really surprised about. And I, I appreciate them having an open mind and knowing how damaging this bill will actually be to Colorado. So Shannon Bird of Adams and Jefferson County, uh, Sheila Leader of Jefferson County, Megan Lukens of Eagle and Moffat County, Bob Marshall of Douglas County, Matthew Martinez of Alamosa, Pueblo, Huerfano County, Tisha Morrow of Pueblo County, Barbara McLaughlin, La Plata and San Juan counties, Mark Snyder of El Paso and Teller County. He likes to vote. A lot of these people, they vote kind of um, like Bob Marshall and Mark Snyder. You never, really, Snyder, you never really know how they're gonna be, vote all the time. So I do appreciate them voting no. And then Mary Young of Weld County. So a lot of females in there, which obviously like that's surprising, um, just, uh, you know, in, in general. So appreciate them. I'll put their, their emails in this video um, in the bio description. So if you want to send them a thank you email saying you, we appreciate 
you, um, you know, potentially getting educated on this, um, or maybe due to the lack of, you know, maybe knowledge towards firearms and so forth and not wanting to vote for it just because you don't have all the information. Um, we really appreciate that as well. Um, all of the Republicans did vote no. So if you have a Republican in your county, good for them. And let's keep it that way. And let's not um, have this bill come up next year. All right. So once this bill does get a uh, Senate committee hearing, it will be going up against five committee members, two Democrats, actually three Democrats and two Republicans. However, Dylan Roberts will be more of a swing vote. He has been known to vote, uh, you know, a couple of different ways. So this bill could tip, could technically die in that committee. If a lot of people show up, a lot of people sign up to testify, I will put the testimony link sign up here in this, um, in this post. And all you have to do is go to either click Zoom or in person. Try not to send in just a written statement. They don't read them. And then you're going to go by committee hearing. And then you'll select 1292 once it goes up and then the time and date and then just put in some information and then you're signed up. Super, super easy to testify in Colorado. Um, the Senate committee members are going to be Julie Gonzalez, the um, Senate sponsor of this bill. So we all know how she's going to vote. Daphna Janae um, of Adams in Arapahoe County, Democrat, I'm pretty sure she'll vote in favor of it. Bob Gardner of El Paso and Teller County, um, a Republican, and then Kevin Van Winkle of Douglas County, Republican, um, and then the swing vote, Dylan Roberts, Moffitt, Gilpin, and Summit County. Democrat, however, has been known to vote differently. So I'm also going to put their emails in this post. If you only send out one email, um, send it to Dylan Roberts, um, I'll definitely put his email and then maybe you just want to include everyone else of uh, those five and let them know why they should be opposed to this bill. If it does pass Senate committee hearing, I want you all to email your senator in your district and I'll put a link to find your senator, email them and then there will be another link to email all the senators as to why they should vote no uh, in opposition of this bill. If you don't know what to write, here are some prompts. Where do these representatives' limitations lie to their gun control uh, when shootings don't stop? So if they do vote in favor for it and shootings still occur, what next, right? Um, which leads me to why go to the extremes when they, some of these representatives voted to reduce funds for school security. Uh, they wanted to make it harder to become a school resource officer. That bill did die um, immediately. That was one of our little wins. Um, this le legislative session. And then uh, why would they want to propose limitations of concealed carry in churches and other vulnerable places? Why not encourage, um, you know, grocery stores and churches to train competent security guards and see if that works first before going to uh, such extreme actions like this bill? Why not do other things first? Uh, and see if that works first. I was at my local grocery store where there was a security officer and I really appreciated that. That was something new and I thought it was a, a great thing to have. Um, another prompt, a house rep said this bill wouldn't affect hunters. Uh, educate them on the benefits of suppressors, why we need a threaded barrel, and how muzzle brakes allow for less recoil and help with hunting accuracy. This bill would essentially uh, ban any sort of rifle with a threaded barrel. So you won't even be able to put a muzzle brake on your hunting rifle. Uh, maybe include like a little personal story. Uh, how you cannot transfer and sell a firearm you initially bought as an investment piece. How the lethality of an AR-15 does not change whether it is compliant like New Jersey, California and has a fixed stock and no muzzle brake. How does that change the lethality of that firearm? It doesn't, it's literally just aesthetics. How this bill only affects law-abiding citizens, but expands the black market of firearms and therefore will only increase crime like there is in inner cities. Inner cities have a lot of shootings. Where did they get those guns? They have some of the strictest gun laws in the country. Uh, this will only allow for a lot of black firearms stuff and crimes will not decrease. Uh, how this won't stop suicide. Suicides are a contributor for more than 54% of all firearm death statistics. So if we still have handguns and a lot of crimes are done with handguns, this won't stop that either. So um, some prompts for you guys when you email these legislators. 
All right, now we're gonna transition into just what else is going on with the other um, status um, updates of the other bills. So HB 24-1270, Farm Liability Insurance, requiring all of you to get limited liability insurance. It did pass the House Committee, so now we'll be waiting for its first reading in the House. HB 24-1310, um, the school safety measures was killed in committee, uh, enhancing requirements for school safety officers. Um, the actual bill sponsor of that one killed her own bill, um, so, uh, Parenti Hamrick, HB 24-1348, Secure Farm Storage and Vehicles. It did pass uh, the Senate uh, second reading. I think it only has one more reading, then it'll go off to Governor Polis's desk. So this is essentially saying that you cannot leave an um, unattended uh, farm in your car unless it's locked up. HB 24-1353, Farm Dealer Requirements and Permit to increase uh, a lot more uh, requirements for farm dealers and increase and actually create an entire department at the uh, Department of Revenue to now regulate us. Um, that did pass the House um, completely and now it's off to the Senate. All right, the fire merchant category code, essentially tracking your firearm purchases, uh, is now on Governor Polis's desk. It's the only bill that's really made it this far. Governor Polis has not signed it yet. However, this bill will not do what the initial sponsors wanted it to do because it won't apply to places like here at Dragon Man's. We have other uh, things that we sell and do here, so we are not just a firearm category uh, merchant. Um, and then also places like Shields and Cabela's won't apply either. So that bill is just going to be useless. Um, and then a lot of these smaller firearm retailers will probably put ATMs in their store. So <sighs> we'll see how that goes. Um, SB 24-131, prohibiting carrying firearms in sensitive spaces. So this is now prohibiting um, concealed carry of firearms now in uh, government uh, places, government buildings, um, colleges and preschools, and then also polling places. This is the only bill that um, you're currently able to sign up to testify. It has, I believe, one last reading in the Senate. Uh, public hearing is on 417, so two days. It's on Wednesday if you want to sign up to talk about that and why people should be allowed to carry in polling places and government buildings and um, college campuses, which actually is huge. I think you should definitely be able to carry on college campuses um, and all the other places, naturally. Uh, all right, so that is it. Uh, I believe um, if you have anything that you want to add to this video, feel free to put a comment below. Appreciate you watching this far. If you did get this far, you know, if you live in Colorado, definitely try to stay up to date. Email your senators, email those five committee members, email Dylan Roberts, and I'm gonna put a link to where you can find who is your Senate uh, senator in your district. And uh, please email them, email all the senators and let them know based off of the prompts that I gave you or come up with your own prompt for your email, why they should not pass this bill and the extreme damage that it's gonna do to only law-abiding citizens in Colorado and uh, other establishments that um, are like here at Dragon Man. So uh, what else? Come on down to Dragon Man's if you do need anything. We're open Tuesday through Sunday, 9.30 to 4. And we have a lot going on here. But just want to make sure you guys are staying up to date. And I'll try to give another update when uh, new things kind of come about in a week or so. See you guys.